is one of the biggest British artists of all time. And it's no wonder with hits like Seven Days, Walking Away and Rewind. More numbers for you. Over the last 22 <laughs> years, he's had 25 top 40 singles, more than 5 billion streams worldwide. We'll test you later. Uh, and he's been nominated <laughs> for 14 Brit Awards. Take a breath. Take a look. I'm delighted to say Craig is with us on the sofa now. Morning. Good morning. How are you both? We're really good, thank you. How are you? I'm really, really good. Um, that last song that we just saw, that that's the new one. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, like DNA. Tell us about that song. It was uh, just trying to break it down, how connected we are through our DNA. Um, I'm, I've been seeing it and I'm doing my live shows, like the light at the end of the tunnel that we were hoping for throughout the pandemic. And finally you're seeing like, everyone connected, everyone there together. So um, it touches on that. And then also I wanted a summer banger for, for, <laughs> to, for, for me going out and doing my TS5 shows in Ibiza. So it worked out really well and it's been really well received, which is great. Yeah. Could you believe when we just went through those numbers about the billions of streams and the numbers of hits, it's, it's bonkers. When you, when you yeah, more... it's unbelievable. And it's, it kind of just for me really reinforces how important those songs have been in people's lives. Like when you see how many people have been streaming it and the, the memories people have made and the healing and, they, and people who've been got married to certain songs mm. or they met a uh, place together. That's really the, the biggest recognition as artists you can ever have. So it's lovely seeing those numbers because they correspond to actually people, which is great. Yeah. And you are so busy, aren't you? Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> really... What's it like to all these years later to still be working at that pitch, to have that energy? Where do you find mm. the inspiration, the drive just to keep going? Do you know what? It's, it's through knowing that I get to live my dream through my music and I get to give that experience to people when I, as I said, doing live shows. But to have music from all the way from Born to Do It all the way up to... Look any different. Wow, I, I, I say it to everyone else about Benjamin Button. Like, <laughs> like you know, that, that I think I think it's a lot to do. It's rejuvenating in of itself. So yeah, it's it's been a wonderful journey so far. And you've learned a lot over the years, haven't mm. you? You've learned so much, in fact, that you've written it all down. Definitely. To help other people. What, why did you do that? And, and what were the, the points in your life that took you to places that perhaps you, you learned from? Do you know what? I mean, I, I, and I talk about this like in much more expansive than I can do today in the book, but it was all about early days behind the scenes of some of those songs that people have just seen then and how we may have been feeling behind the scenes. that. There was the human being and then there was the, the portraying that life is great as a musician. And I felt that I really needed to unravel that and to say that I have experienced depression, I've experienced being bullied at school, being bullied and ridiculed on, on, on nationally on TV, and the reasons why I, I may have moved away to Miami and come back, but the healing I had to go through and telling it in stories form so people hopefully can just resonate with it. It's not about the musician. You don't have to be someone who's in the public eye. You, everyone deals with depression at different severities, but you have to have felt it. And I felt that was really important for me to, you can only speak on bullying if you've really experienced it. You can really only really speak on depression if you've actually experienced it. And it, it really took me to a dark place that I never thought as such a positive person that I'd be speaking about that. But the most important thing is that I am talking about it and I wanted to have a book that does touch on it. Cause I feel like people will say, you know what? 
I know he's going through, and I know I'm going through that, and this is how maybe I healed myself, and someone else can hopefully resonate with that and, and not have to go through some of the pitfalls that I went through too. How are you doing now? I'm so much better, and so much better in recognising that mental health is something that always has to be managed. And you can easily be triggered by things that usually are in your childhood. And as an adult, you're trying to unravel and deal with those. And the more you push them under the carpet, is the more they rear their head up in other ugly ways. So it's just a constant maintaining, maintaining of my mental health and talking about it. The more people talk about it, like when I saw Leon speaking earlier, I'm just like, you're speaking your truth and you're making a difference by hearing and speaking about what means and matters to you. You're seen. And I think that's for me, as an artist, my responsibility now is to unravel the mystery around, oh, it's great, it's glitzy, it's post to post on Instagram and it's the likes. Now let's get underneath it. Let's have a real deep dive conversation rather than just ice skating through life. So yeah, it's been, uh, it's been empowering and healing for me in a lot of respects. Ice skating through life, that's a great <laughs> phrase, yeah. But at times it's been nasty, hasn't it? You, know, yeah. you talk about being bullied as a child, um, bullied on mm. national television. Um, how do you come through that? How do you, you know, just as a, you say, not as a musician, as a human being, yeah. where do you find the resilience to put yourself back together again and come and talk to us on the sofa and release new music yeah. when people have been mean? Yeah, do you know what it is? Is that it's, as you said, about bringing fragmented parts of you and back together. So my experience of, of bullying at school wasn't as bad as some other people who experienced at school. And I wrote a song called Johnny that even really goes into that on my Story Goes album. Um, but it's the me defense mechanisms that you create, like let's laugh it off, um, let's, or, or you become very introverted and you want to run away or you want to leave school. So I, I felt like there's the kid in me who's speaking to every young boy and young girl out there from bullying stage, but because it was impounded by becoming ridiculed on TV, which was just straight bullying, that for me, it was like, okay, I have to work through this and my leaving to go to Miami. And because of that, because of that show in particular, it, it, it made it, it gave it okay for people to feel that they could continue the bullying, but without knowing, and that normalized it. And I felt like I needed to address that in the book to say, no, 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 because I'm talking on behalf of anyone who's being bullied right now. Um, so to come back and sit here on the sofa, and to talk about it openly and to hopefully have people say, you know what, I'm interested in the story, talk about it, because we all experience different forms of that. And I think it needs to be something that we address as opposed to just trying to shy away from it because it led me into a spiral of depression and to a point where I was questioning, okay, I've never experienced this before. I'm my home, where I love, you know? And how did that show itself? When you say you, it was a spiral, what, what happened? I mean, to... I think everyone's like saying, just say it. It's like, so when the Bo Selector show was out, that period of time was a hard processing for me because I didn't know why a song like Rewind, which was my, a, a cultural song that broke the ice for so many artists to come through, was now being ridiculed. That was one thing that I, I kind of placed it as a music thing, but then actually what it was doing is slowly was just bullying, not only myself, but Mel B, it was bullying Trisha. Um, and I felt that there was no real accountability at that time. And I was young, you know, I was between a rock and a hard place. Do we lean in, defence mecha mechanism? Oh, let's laugh it off, come on, let's do a show together to try and shy away. Was that suggested? Yeah, we did. A we, yeah. We, there was a point at which it, um, Lee Fraser was on stage doing his whole act because we felt, mm, maybe lean in, that might make it go away, didn't work. Or you're going to play the victim, go there. And it's just having accountability. I have no grudge with Lee, genuinely. It's just, it's more the fact of, need to be accountable. Because he, he's apologised. He, he put out an apology, he said I shouldn't have done it. And... Yeah, and, you know, I, I don't know if, how sincere. It just feels a bit of a coincidence that it happened to come at a time when George Floyd has been killed in, in broad daylight in America to then have the Black Lives Move, uh, Movement, Lives Matter Movement, being at protests around the world to, to show this. And then it comes at a time as a reaction to I need to then say my piece for something that really should never have gone there in terms of ever going to putting a rubber mask on that's black facing, which it was. And it's just being accountable for that. And I think that ultimately I never really spoke about that. And the coincidence of it just felt too timely. And I was, and it, it, I feel emotional about speaking about it because I just felt like I was talking on behalf of so many people who've been bullied and experienced that. But at the same time, this isn't my moment to be like, I'm going to double down on Lee Francis, it's not. It's just that let's be accountable for things that 
truly matter to people because I'm now representing that. So yeah, it, I talk about it all in the book, What's Your Vibe? And it was, uh, it was very empowering for me to heal myself by talking about it like that, you know? Healed, that's, that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. And the album out at the same time as well. Yeah, so we're celebrating music and we're talking our truth. And I feel like you can't do much more than that. So yeah, the new album is, is the, the, the feeling I got from Born to Do It, the first album. I've done it all over again in that and a new book, What's Your Vibe? So. Thanks so much for coming in and talking to us. My pleasure. Lovely to see you. And the new album is called 22 to reflect those 22 years of Craig's career.